Okay, I have no idea if this is in focus, but I am just going to test this. I am holding my 6K Pro and with one hand walking. Um, and I just want to test the 7.9 software and then see how it stabilizes. Um, we'll see how this looks. This is one hand and I'm using the Sigma 18 to 35, the very popular one uh, at 18. So there's no stabilization in the lens. And I wonder if a lens has stabilization, if that's going to mess up the data at all or if it's got to know the focal length that you were actually at okay here i am testing i'm just walking i got uh my normal handheld motion here i'm at 24 frames no slow-mo zoomed all the way out okay now i got my daughter walking i'm i'm walking sideways let's see i'm definitely wobbly here warp stabilizer wouldn't do so bad so i imagine it would do good for real now I'm zoomed in all the way and I'm walking. I'm at 35 millimeters. Don't know what's behind me. She's starting to walk faster. I'm starting to walk faster. Can't keep the focus. Oh no, it's cute though. So now let's move on to some crazy running stuff. So now let's move on to some crazy running stuff. Lastly, here's like a normal push-in shot. If it was like a portrait type. All right, look right at the camera and then smile. And then here's a portrait shot if it was zoomed out all the way. Okay, here in DaVinci Resolve, that's what it's all looking like. Let's see if this is pretty easy to figure out. I'm gonna guess that it's stabilization and it's gonna be a different mode. Ha, ah, there it is. Nice. Camera gyro. Here is the moment. Stabilize. I have this set to 4K timeline. Uh, it's not that bad. I have a Ryzen 7 5800X for the processor on Windows. Um, it's not that bad for stabilizing. It is a fairly larger shot, and it's a 6K shot in a 4K timeline. Um, I don't see doing this for every single little shot unless it really calls for it. Uh, one thing I'm expecting is like the motion blur that happens from too much shake. You can't get rid of that no matter what data you have. It's just going to be motion blur. So uh, if you change your shutter angle and you know you're going to be using this, change your shutter angle to something like less motion blur. So that's my recommendation, a faster shutter speed or just slower, more natural movements. This is still better than warp stabilizer though. That's the thing to come from is knowing that this is going to be better than warp stabilizer. Question is how far is this going to zoom in? I have that zoom checked there. Or if I like delete some of the strength, how how does it do it then? Here we go. Okay, that zoomed way in. Wow. And with one hand walking, um, and I just want to test the. That's pretty good, but you see the motion blur over here. And then see. Uh, now my computer's getting jittery. Okay, that's pretty decent playback. 4K timeline, 6K. Um, let's lower this a bit. Oh, it's got to re-stabilize the whole thing. So on the other settings, I don't know if this is a DaVinci Resolve 18 because it's beta or not, but when I redo the strength, usually it doesn't have to reanalyze. It's just going to reapply. Um, but for this, it's reanalyzing. So th like to play around and find the right setting, it's going to take a long time. Okay, that's not too bad there. Let's see this. Okay, I have no idea if this is in focus, but I am just going to test this. I am holding my 6K Pro and with one hand. That looks walking. pretty good. Um, Man. And I just want to that test that. That is acceptable. Even to take out half of that just from a normal walk. That feels normal and um, there's no war. We'll okay, so here are my reactions is 
it the motion blur is so present so you need to use this as lowering the strength but you wouldn't get this smooth on a warp stabilizer or anything like that anyways without it warping so with that in mind it is better so i would recommend lowering the strength if you're going to use this because you can get a a nice handheld look and remember like smooth butter like it sounds good smooth buttery footage sounds like it would be extra cinematic but it's really not it depends on what the feel of it is handheld is totally fine it's those micro jitters that can get uh really distracting at times unless you really need that uh so just a really great feature really awesome i think that makes this thing worth it and especially if you already have this stuff and then it's just a free upgrade. That's really, 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 really cool. Um, I am going to go out just one more bonus thing because I have another theory of what if we change that shutter angle to be as little motion blur as possible and then we run this and what will it look like? Uh, so I'm going to go try that right now. So if you like these colors and you switch over to it, uh, this is a LUT that I have for sale on Filter Grade. The, LUT, the link will be in the bio. All I did was place some exposure and lowered that down here just to uh, re-expose it. And then, because I was overexposed, but this is the look that you get. It's a great in-camera one where it, uh, it really just captures that whole dynamic range. It really works on keeping the highs up here and a uh, very vibrant color. Uh, and I, th I really, really, really like it. So if you want to get that LUT uh, and use that and have a little bit of a more bright studio look, here's the link for that. I would really appreciate that. Uh, great for an in-camera LUT. It's built specifically for Blackmagic cameras, but it would work on any sort of log footage. And if you wanted a Panasonic VST, let me know. I would just need to go in and produce that. I still have the power grade and everything, but what's for sale is just the LUT. Thank you everybody for watching. If you like this kind of content, let me know. 